I'm Mike Mechanic. When your first plan fails, go to Plan B. That's where Jesse Hall, alias Plan B, got his nickname. In Sobranti Park, Jesse's East Oakland neighborhood, a flourishing drug trade entices many young men with the promise of easy money. True to his nickname, Jesse found another way, but the talented young rapper never had a chance to realize his dreams. This is the story of Jesse, his father, Bobby Hall, and their neighborhood, where survival can't be taken for granted. One of my friends came and got me. He came and told me, hey man, come on, you gotta come home right now, it's important, man. I said, what is it? And he was all excited and nervous. I said, man, what's going on? He said, man, Jesse been shot. I said, no, man, uh-uh, Jesse ain't been shot. It's really strange because I didn't see no blood. I didn't see any bullet wounds. I didn't see nothing. But when we went and made the funeral arrangements, they said that he had gotten shot up so bad. Because he did. You know, bullets was passing through him, hitting the other people in the car. Last June, Bobby and Mona Hall lost their 22-year-old son, Jesse, in a drive-by shooting. Jesse, an artist and up-and-coming rapper, was an accidental victim of the violence crack cocaine has brought to Zabronti Park, the Hall's East Oakland neighborhood. Jesse's friend, Safir, described what things can be like there. You might be at the store getting you something to drink. You walk out, somebody's shooting at somebody else. You get popped, that's it. So it's just basically trying to, like, stay out of the crossfire. The drive-by shooting lets you mention, like, everybody knows who did it. They're dope dealers. Crack and crack dealing is something that's in some, some neighborhoods. The kids grow up, and they start selling dope at an early age. And it just kind of, like, they kind of take over. They kind of take over that, that, that neighborhood. But Bobby Hall refused to bow to the drug dealers in his neighborhood. They used to deal drugs right there. And I told them to leave and to get away from in front of my house. And one of them said something about taking somebody out. So I came to the house and got my 12 gauge. And I said, I ain't going to try to shoot you one at a time. Y'all standing there in the crowd and you talking about killing me? You ready to die to take this from me? Well, I'm ready to die to keep you from doing it. That was before they started calling me Mr. Hall. A big daddy. How's, how's crack changed this community? Tore it apart. Tore it apart. I seen Sobrani Park go from a community where you could sit outside at night on your cars and things. I like to sing. And it was a group of us. We could stop in front of your house and we start singing. And you probably come out on the porch and sit and listen to us. Nowadays, anybody come past your house, hey, you getting a gun and running to the window and laying on the floor, peeping out the cracks. You hear me? And then the kids could go from house to house and play. Nowadays, you have to escort your kid to each house that you let him go play at, make sure that you, you have to check the parents out themselves before you let him play there every day. It, it has turned into a prison. Is it really that bad? It's really that bad. Really that bad. It, it's, man, it, it's worse than that. At nighttime, when you go out, get your gun. Why does everybody carry guns? This shit is hectic. I got a gun on me, right? Well, no, I ain't got one right now, but if I did, if I had one, it'd be on me right now. No, I'm not no killer or nothing. You know, I just don't want to get shot, man. I have been shot twice. I've always taught all three of my children, Jesse, Angela, and Lil Bobby, that death, just as well as living, is part of life. And there's no hiding from it. And just like you talk about the weather, we talk about death. The kids in the flatlands just think that, hey, man, there's only one way out of here, basically. Uh, athletics and sports. If I don't go to school, well, so-and-so's dealing dope. I can start grinding and sell dope. What does grinding mean? Grinding is to sell uh, narcotics on the street. His father told me that he did try selling it at one time. And he came to the realization 
that, you know, this wasn't the way. Yo, man, it's a lot of brothers talking about getting into the dope game, thinking it's peaches and cream, even green, but it ain't like that, man. I'm gonna let them know why I got in and got out real fast. Step to the stage with the big smile, grabbing the mic so I can reflex ass lifestyle. When rap first came out, he fell in love with it and started rapping in. And, you know, like most little kids start off rapping and stumbling through it. He wanted to be a rapper. And we say that's fine, you know. You can, you can, you can rap. You can write songs. You can do all of that. That's fine. But you need to get an education. You have to have something, to, something you can fall back on. If something, if one thing don't work out, then you can always go to something else. I think that's where he got the name Plan B from too. He got better with it. Then he started writing his own lyrics, making up his own rap. And he went on and came up to where he was when the accident happened, ready to put out his own LP, and he had put together a whole record company. He had snuck behind Bobby in my back and had applied to Gremlin University. He never found out he was accepted. He received a letter, and we received a telephone call the day after he was murdered. Because he was, we, we, we all silly, you know, and Jesse was silly. But sometimes, you know, you don't be in a silly mood, and then he silly you to death, and then you get silly, and then you can't get off. You know? Me and Jesse was like, man, that was my brother, you know what I mean? That was my brother. We were, we were very tight. And I ended up showing him how to airbrush. He would come through every other day, you know, practically every day, just learning how to airbrush just by watching. And all the money we made airbrushing, we could put into putting his album out. That's the way it is when you're grinding. Bobby has long been fighting the drug problem in his neighborhood. He is active in neighborhood groups striving to improve educational opportunities for kids and to get parents involved in their children's schooling. He is also part of Home Alert, which encourages neighbors to report crimes. I asked Bobby whether his efforts have paid off. To say yes would mean that the killing and the violence has stopped. As you know, my, my son just died gunned down here in the streets. A week before that, a guy was gunned down right there on my in, in the streets and on my porch. We have gained supporters of the more support of the community, but not full support of the community. If things are so bad down here and it's not a safe place for your kids, why do you stay? I got involved in the community, and I love this community because I own a piece of this community, and I care about it. My man lost his life to these damn streets that I'm trying to clean up. I'm sure not gonna walk away now. I'm sure not walking away now.